Now look at stories coming through from across the world. Fears mounted that a highly infectious new coronavirus strain was pushing its way into Europe as the world brought the shutters down to contain the new Omicron variant. Suspected new cases emerged in Germany and the Czech Republic, while Dutch authorities quarantined 61 passengers from South Africa who tested positive for COVID-19. South Africa complained that it was being punished with air travel bans for fast detecting the strain, which the World Health Organization has termed a variant of concern. Australia and Thailand joined the United States, Brazil, Canada and a host of other countries around the world restricting travel from the region, fearing a major setback to global efforts against the pandemic. Scientists are racing to determine the threat posed by the heavily mutated strain, which is more transmissible than the dominant Delta variant, and whether it can evade existing vaccines. Anxious travelers thronged Johannesburg International Airport, desperate to squeeze into the last flights to countries that had imposed sudden travel bans. Many had cut back holidays and rushed back from South African safaris and vineyards. Elsewhere on Monday, nearly a quarter of a century on, Prince Charles will be present when Barbados becomes the world's newest republic with an elected president, note the Queen as the head of state. The ceremony will not be on the same scale as in Hong Kong when military marching bands and bagpipes provided the backdrop to a momentous occasion that was described as the epilogue of empire. But the Caribbean island's abandonment of constitutional monarchy is important not just for the monarch and her heir, but the new republic and others that may follow. Royal officials have said little about the end of nearly four painful centuries of British rule and influence on Barbados, which was a key centre in the slave trade. However, it sends a clear message that in the twilight of the 95-year-old Queen's reign and when Charles, aged 73, succeeds, the British monarch monarchy's global reach is diminished. If they do not appreciate the travels of those who went before. And finally, police in Burkina Faso fired tear gas to disperse hundreds of protesters at an unsanctioned anti-government rally in the capital on Saturday, an AFP journalist reported. Anti-riot police fired tear gas to prevent the demonstrators from gathering for the rally in a square in the center of Ouagadougou, where substantial police and security forces had been deployed and all shops closed. Angry young people erected makeshift barricades and burned tires in several neighborhoods in an effort to block police movement. The crowds had wanted to demonstrate against the failure of the president to quell jihadist violence that had engulfed the country, but city authorities banned the gathering. One of the protesters, 28-year-old Fabrice Sawadogo, said that after seven years of failure to prevent the terrorist attacks, it is time to ask the government to go. The incompetent administration has to admit it has failed, he said. An alliance of three groups called the November 27th Coalition had called for people to take to the streets on Saturday in a peaceful atmosphere to denounce the growing insecurity and demand of departure of Kabul. A spokesperson for the group, Mausa Konate, said that it was also planning to hold protests in the nation's second city and other cities. But other civil society groups distanced themselves from the protests, refusing, they said, to be complicit with those who want to push the country into chaos. Groups linked to al-Qaeda and the so-called Islamic State group have plagued the landlocked Sahel nation since 2015, killing about 2,000 people and displacing 1.4 million from their homes.